Okay, we're going to keep playing with the symbolic toolbox here. Um, and I'm using a live script. So under new, you would need to go to live script to kind of see what's going on um, between uh, what I've got going on here. So basically what live script is doing is it's kind of running it live. But the neat thing about using live script with symbolic algebra is you get pretty print. And so um, I did another video on this, but just to kind of give you an idea, like if I do this um, in the command window, it does this, which is kind of what you would expect it to see. But if I'm typing it in a live script, it makes it pretty, pretty print. Okay, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about the solve function. So um, solve basically sets stuff to zero and solves it, <laughs> which is not surprising. So if I have something like, so I'm going to declare a symbolic, um, what do you call that thing? <laughs> variable, a symbolic variable x. And I want to solve x minus 3. Um, it's going to come back and it's going to say 3. And you're like, well, how does it know it's 3? And it's like, well, because just naturally it's going to set something to 0 and solve it. Um, if you want to be more specific, you could say x minus 3 is equal to 12. Then it's going to solve that and get 15. I was freaking out for a minute because I was like, wait, it's supposed to be 9. But no, it's supposed to be 12. I mean 15. <laughs> so um, solve just sets stuff to 0 and solves it. I'll say um, unless you specifically set it to something else. Can't spell. All right. Um, now, note that you have to put the double equal sign in there because if I a, put a single equal sign in there, um, that's not working. Um, that, I would be trying to say, well, the expression x minus 3 is equal to the expression of 12. That I mean, I, you could argue, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not, you got to put 2 in there. So um, just to be clear, it's like I can't do this. It's going to freak out. Um, now I could just have this and I'd say that these two are equal. So anyway, along that line. So you got to have the double equal sign in there. All right. So solve function, it's kind of neat. Um, do, 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 um, let's see, how can I make this pretty? All right, uh, let's do x squared minus 9. All right. Okay, so um, something in general that you could see, looking here, all these things that are the answers, so let's call it a 1, a 2, and a 3. Whenever I solve these, note that the type of the answer is a symbol. So if I was going to then come in here and say, okay, a1 plus 3, okay, it's going to tell me 6, but again, the answer is a symbol, which maybe isn't going to be a problem. And I'm trying to think of an example where this would be a problem. Uh, y times 6, is it going to be mad at me? No. Mm. Okay. It's not yelling at me too much. So, um, oh, I know where it could be annoying. Well, first of all, let's do uh, a4. I'm going to solve. Let's do something obnoxious. The square root of 16 minus 5. Oops, x, <laughs> x minus the square root of 16 minus 5. Okay, so it's giving me the answer that's the square root of 11. Um, and what if I'm like, but I don't want the square root of 11. I actually want to know the square root of 11. So I want to have that answer. I don't want this pretty answer. Um, I think on the T99, if you just put a period there, it comes back with a, um, yeah, it does. It, it would come back with the actual number. And it would give you an approximation, but that doesn't work. This actually did used to work in the symbolic um, toolbox in MATLAB, but it doesn't anymore. It's just going to give you the, the, it's going to assume you didn't know what you were talking about. So actually what you need to do, um, A4 as a number, you would need to convert that to a double in order to get um, the numeric value. So um, taking double on your outputs is going to convert. And now if you see over here, it's not a symbol. It is a, come here girl, double. 
Okay, so the class, and you can tell looking at it here too, but the class on the answer is now a double, um, which means I can actually see um, what that's supposed to be. Um, and there are examples where you can get these really, really, really long, um, obnoxious things. I'm trying to think if I want to solve for the sine of, I don't know, like, well, 30. I'm just going to put a minus x in there. And it's giving me one half, and you're like, thanks, that's like kind of helpful, but like I just want the stupid 0.5. Um, so um, you would need to say double of a5 to get that nice 0.5 value that everybody knows and loves. Um, I feel like it can also do weird things. Yeah, so <laughs> there is a good example where it's like, oh yeah, the sine of 36 degrees is whatever that is over whatever that is. <laughs> just tell me what the stupid answer is and that's when you would convert it to a double to get that so solve yay <laughs> okay um so uh so yeah we can actually solve this and it's kind of showing you on the side it's it's sneaky and showing you my answers in advance but that's okay um so if I come in here and I'm going to specifically solve uh the quadratic equation um there it's giving me my two um two solutions, the negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c. Now this is actually the minus one first. This is negative b minus the square root and then negative b plus the square root. So it's giving it to me backwards because it's obnoxious, but that's okay. All right, let's see what else we can do. So we can go kind of crazy here. Um, and like if I just want to solve that, um, <laughs> look at that. See, isn't that pretty? This would also be... Answer six. This would also be a great example of, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, this would also be an example of where you might want to say, oh, A6, um, and then get a numerical value because this is just not actually that helpful and it's got lots of I's and the square roots of I's in this. I don't know, it just makes me sad. Um, so you can go kind of nuts, um, but you can't go too nuts. So um, I'm going to show you uh, a7, where I, instead of saying it's equal to 9, I'm going to say it's equal to 9x plus 2. And it's like, I can't actually solve this symbolically. So basically what it does to solve this, so like this is an exact answer up here. I don't know why I'm making this take up so much space. This is an exact answer, and this is an approximation. This is also an approximation. And it is still a symbolic approximation, which is even weirder. Um, you can kind of tell the way that the text is. Like this is like a Times New Roman, and this is like a Courier New text. Uh, so the Courier is what you would get for a double, and the Times New Roman is what you would get for the symbolic. But basically what it did is it like, is it 0.18? No, that's too low. Is it 0.19? No, it's too high. And then it just kind of kept getting closer and closer and closer until it, it solved it. So just... I don't want to make it sound as easy as a guess and check, but it, it very intelligently did a guess and check until it got to the answer that it wanted. And again, if there was a reason that you wanted to use it as a double, um, you could just run it as a double and then it's going to give you that like that. All right. So you can go nuts, but there are some things that are even not solvable by um, numerically in, in MATLAB. Now it's kind of neat because you can actually solve for, um, thank you. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, for different variables, um, so if I'm doing my um, y equals mx plus b, I can solve for m, I can solve for y, I can solve for x, and I can solve for b. So that's just your um, equation of a line here. If I want to say um, uh, solve, m is um, y, can't spell, y is, x is, and then B is. So again, I don't even really have to run this. I'm just doing it out of um, muscle memory. Um, but it's it's solving for m y. See y equals mx plus b, x and b. So y minus mx. So you can actually solve for the individual variables within a um, function by um, by just asking it, asking for it. So solve for m, solve for x, solve for y, solve for b. Let's see. Um, you can also um, solve systems of equations. Um, so if you've got something like this, okay, so come here, girl. 
Why? Why? Okay. Okay. So, um, 3x plus 2y plus z equals 10. Negative x plus 3y plus 2z is 5. And x minus y minus z is equal to 1. So, um, you have these three equations here. Now, if you were going to solve this using um, linear algebra, hopefully you remember you would go like 3, 2, negative 1, 10, uh, negative 1, 3, 2, 5, 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then you would do um, reduced row echelon form of that. Oh, wait, that's not supposed to be a space. Um, and you would get the answer, and the answer is negative 2, 5, and negative 6. Okay, so you can solve it this way, but it does require some effort, okay? And by effort, I just mean you have to actually read what those coefficients are. But I believe that you can go 1, 2, 3, and then it's going to solve for x, y, z again. Other way. So you can actually use the solve function. So solve is again what is called like an overloaded function where depending on what information you give into it, it's going to give you something different. So if I gave it an equation and a variable, it solves the equation for the variable. If I give it multiple equations, it solves all of the equations for whatever variables happen to be. Um, other way. Oh, it doesn't like it because it's a structure. Okay, so um, this is even better. To know so I'm going to spell this <laughs> correctly so um, now when we so I tried to do a double on this and it yelled at me and I'll show you that again um, because you can't use a double on a structure so again remember when we were solving these up here it was giving us answers that were all symbols so X is Y is these are all symbols now whenever I'm solving it the solve function is actually giving me what is a structure um, and so, let's see, it shows you. So other way is a structure with these specific fields. Okay, so the fields are x, y, and z. So I have to say other way x, other way y, and other way z to get those individual values out. And again, looking at the um, font size right here, I can tell already that those are going to be symbolic. And if I look over here, the answer, the generic answer is is indeed symbolic. So I could do the double on that. Let's see if I have anything. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so another way, so so this is one way to do it. Um, so I could, I could double each one of these independently. X is double this, um, Y is double this, and Z is double this okay so then i'm getting the two the five and the negative the negative two the negative the positive five and the negative six again the same thing i got with reduced row echelon um it's just a little bit different so i think though i was looking at the other slide x y and c i can say solve one two three no you don't like that oh i forgot the equal sign that's why you don't like it Okay, so now it's getting me the three outputs instead of throwing it into a structure. And again, they are um, they're symbols, but it's a lot easier to get out. So if I know in advance um, x, y, z, 2, 5, and 6. So, um, so there's a couple of ways that I can use this solve function. I can either um, get the structure out or I can specifically say, hey, I know what three variables I'm looking for, and it will go ahead and put those into those. So again, this isn't stuff that you necessarily memorize for a test, um, that like, do this on pencil and paper. Um, this is just something that you kind of play around with it, and you're like, would I rather have my output in a structure, or would I rather have my output in three individual values? And that just kind of depends on what you're doing with it. So there's that. Now, okay, so back to this. So I'm gonna change one thing. Um, I'm going to change this one x and make it an x squared, and I'm going to change, well, I guess I'm going to change three things. I'm going to make this an x squared, this a y squared, and this is z squared or x times y. All that to say is, if I do this, look at what I have here. Now, 
I can no longer solve this using linear algebra because it's no longer linear, it's quadratic. So this is quadratic term, this is a quadratic term, and this is a quadratic term. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't do the reduced row echelon form. The only way to solve these now is to solve one, two, and three. And now it's giving me this structure, so let's actually ask it specifically for x, y, and z, because I think I like that better. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm scared. We're all scared, son. I don't like that at all. Double x, y, z. Oh, it doesn't appear to... Oh, there we go. That's... So much better. Well, that's really obnoxious. So anyway, so it's giving me apparently a lot of different potential answers that I'm super not interested in. Um, but this is definitely an example where I'd rather use double than this. Holy mackerel, I'm not even 100% sure what that means, but I'm just glad I didn't have to solve that by hand. So y'all have fun with that. Okay. All right. So let's leave this video on that. And yeah, I think I need a cup of coffee before I go any further.